So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really, really pleased to be here today and to present to you this project. Um, I am a professor in structural engineering at the Université de Sherbrooke in Canada, in the French part of Canada. And uh, I, there I mainly study the seismic vulnerability of uh, bridges. I'll try this. Yeah. So my interest in the project that I am presenting today is to uh, better define the limit states of reinforced concrete columns confined with carbon fiber reinforced polymer, or uh, CFRP, we'll call that CFRP from now. So uh, in fact, we know that in a performance-based design, like you see the matrix here, uh, we need to know the um, we need, it is essential to relate the limit states to the different uh, uh, performance level required. The performance level can be a service level or uh, just uh, before uh, collapse level. The limit states can be defined by an, in, by an engineering demand parameters such as ductility. That's what we do in this project. And uh, those picture, photo are from Caltrans, thank you. <laughs> and uh, well, the values for uh, unreinforced, uh, unconfined reinforced concrete columns are well documented in the literature, uh, but there are much less studies uh, published for RC columns confined with CFRP about the limit states. So this is why you see all those uh, question marks there. Um, what we know is that the limit states of a reinforced concrete column, column confined with CFRP are different from those uh, of a, an unconfined column. As you can see on the figure, you will have uh, other uh, damage uh, parameters that will appear during the loading of the columns. And the damages will also occur in a different order. So the CFRP will be there and it will fail before the concrete falling, for example. And this research program started back in 2012 with an uh, experimental uh, program and a numerical program. I was here in 2013 to present this part of the project to the working group with Emmanuel. Um, I'll show you some results of these uh, experimental program. We tested uh, back then five columns. Uh, the parameters used were the confinement with CFRP. We had one column unconfined and the four others were confined with one layer of CFRP. Uh, the spacing of the spirals uh, varied from 75 millimeter to 150 millimeter, a larger one. And the actual load was either 10% uh, of the gross capacity or 35% of the gross capacity of the column. Okay, so if you want to, to follow uh, for the presentation, S is the spacing, 75 or 150. P is the loading, 10% or 35. And C, zero, no, no wrap, and C1, one wrap. So it's easy like that. Uh, the test consisted in a classical cyclic loading on the, on the constant actual low. Um, you have the details of the columns, the, the height here, it's about uh, two, two meter high and uh, three, 300 millimeters uh, diameters, circular columns. I'm showing the results really fast. Uh, just like we, we, ex we expect and we know, uh, you will gain ductility uh, with, the, with the wrap, so here you have the results for the column with the small spacing, no wrap, small spacing, and one wrap, and small loading, um, actual load. So you see that we gain a little bit of strength, but not that much, but we gain a lot in terms of ductility. We characterize everything, we publish about that, and of course it is really good. You all know about that. Uh, if we go on and see uh, for different spacing of the transverse reinforcement, but with the confinement, same loading, again, we can see uh, an increase in terms of ductility, which is good. And uh, finally, uh, for um, a column with a higher actual load, but different spacing, the 
time, the, the gain in ductility is not there, but we at least perform almost as well as for the smaller uh, spacing of the transverse reinforcement, which is good too. But again, this was published back then, uh, 2013 or, or so. We also did a numerical analysis and a parametric study using uh, OpenSeas, the software, and we were able to establish limit states with the numerical study. Uh, but still, I had some concerns because uh, we are not able to really see what is happen happening under the CFRP during the loading. Uh, this is why I uh, contacted then uh, my colleague, Professor Patrice Rivard, who is an expert in uh, non-destructive methods, and we decided to uh, carry out a non-destructive test. So the main focus of my presentation today is uh, what I consider a very promising method, the acoustic emission technique approach that we can use during the test to really observe what is going on during the test. Uh, the name that you see here are all my students that worked with me uh, on those projects. So today I'm representing uh, the, the work of Audrey. The objectives uh, were to confirm the values of the limit states for our RC columns confined with CFRP, the values of ten, uh, the values of the limit states of time with the numerical study. Uh, characterize the acoustic signature of the damages. So it is to relate the, the damages to some acoustic parameters, with a, which I will show you, um, and locate the damage. So in very simple words, the acoustic emission technique consists in detecting an acoustic wave from an acoustic event, such as damage in concrete as RCFRP. And uh, the acoustic wave is uh, described with uh, different parameters such as the rise time, the number of count. You can see here, but we will see it uh, later on. So the rise time, the duration, the absolute energy, uh, the amplitude, uh, and the duration. duration. Uh, I will present the detailed results of uh, three out of uh, the five columns. So uh, the one with uh, small spacing, low at actual low, no confinement, the same thing but with confinement, and finally, a larger spacing, high actual load, and confinement. The first step in our study consisted in uh, simply evaluating the severity of the damage uh, with some of the parameters. So quickly, we can see here uh, two parameters presented, uh, the, and we see the normalized value of the absolute uh, energy and of the cumulative count. You can observe here for the unconfined column that we have high value of a count at the ductility at ductilities between two and four. So maybe right now we can imagine that there is a limit state there, but we will try to confirm that uh, later on. Uh, now for the same column, but with confinement, in this case, the higher value are up to a ductility value of seven or so. Well, I know it's seven because I measured it, but <laughs> so it's uh, around seven. So probably the one of the limit states, the severe damage will be somewhere around that. We will come from that uh, later. And here are the, the IS for the, the columns with a large spacing, high actual load and confined. We have a highest value between four <laughs> and six. Value of the utility between four and six here. So, going further in our research, uh, we worked on the damage localization with triangulation and, sorry about that, uh, the most important thing is the identification <coughs> of the damages with parameters clustering, including uh, some tests, uh, some laboratory tests on small concrete uh, beams to help us define the signature of the damages. And the accuracy of the localization that you see here, so I'm talking about accuracy, you see that the red uh, dot here are outside the column. So the accuracy depends on four important uh, parameters, the arrival time, the position of captors, the wave speed, the acquisition uh, threshold. So maybe we should refine some of those parameters where thinking about refining the position of the captors because we have some events outside the column. 
However, we can see that a large amount is in this zone, which is the plastic in zone. So it seems correct anyway. And uh, this phenomenon was also observed in the literature for other uh, other people. So it's not. Uh, it will be helpful anyway for us. And on the other side, you can see the characterization. Uh, I'm here. Characterization uh, using statistical group. Okay, so this is we will concentrate on this part, um, and we will try to regroup the large number of data uh, according to uh, five uh, parameters. We, oui? okay. The parameters we will be studying is the rise time. I told you it would come. It would come back. The rise time, the count. Uh, the duration of the acoustic wave, the amplitude, and the absolute energy. So those are the five parameters that we, we chose for the study. So to characterize really the acoustic signature of the damages, we perform uh, three series of tests on small beams. Um, every, one, uh, in one series uh, only plain concrete, one with three and four with steel bars and the other one only with the FRP layer. And uh, the, the goal was to evaluate the average values of the five parameters that I named earlier <coughs> corresponding to the failure mode. We observed that, for example, concrete crushing, uh, the average parameters of the statistical groups were relatively low. And for a brittle failure, well, the average values were relatively high. So it is a very simple word today. We, we have a lot of data uh, going with this. So we are into the results. Uh, the first column here on confined one, uh, you can see the groups that were uh, defined with an algorithm. We regroup the events, the large number of events, into eight groups. Um, and you have the localization only for ductility of 1.5, but we, we performed it for everything. So the, the details of the eight groups in terms of the parameters are here. I won't have you read everything. We just observe tendency of the values of the groups and we match it with the values that we obtained from the small beams in order to determine, determine what kind of damages happens in the column. So we see here for uh, the unconfined columns that the ductility of 1.5, events of groups 2 and 8 are mostly present. Uh, the parameters have uh, low average values, so it corresponds, uh, we think it corresponds to microcracking. At the ductility level of 2, the events of groups 1, 4, and 7 are very present with higher average values corresponding to more important cracking, as we can see on the picture. And finally, at the ductility level of four, events of groups two, three, six, and eight four are present. Um, so uh, group three has a little bit higher average value, probably corresponding to the concrete uh, spalling at this point. So this is all summarized here. So I'm, after that, what is interesting is that we were able to establish uh, limit state values for this column. I insist we cannot report this for every type of column. It's really a small uh, um, sample of everything. But it matches uh, pretty well with the literature with uh, maybe somewhat conservative value. Same thing for the column confined with one uh, layer of wrapping. Again, we, have, we identified eight groups with the values for these columns. And again, we can see at a level of 1.5, uh, we have events from group 1 and 8, and still it corresponds to micro-cracking of concrete, and also horizontal cracking of CFPRP, which has another acoustic signature. So we observed it, but we also um, measured it with, uh, with the acoustic uh, emission technique. And then at the ductility level of 2, event so from groups uh, 3, 5, and 7 are observed, corresponding to more cracking, but concrete cracking that we cannot see during the test. And at the level of uh, ductility level of 7, 
we had the other events corresponding to gradual failure of the CFRP wrap. This column failed gradually, it was not one big, uh, big sum. So again, this is uh, summarized here. I will go uh, to the ductility, uh, lim the limit states. So one thing we have to note is that we were not able to record the acoustic signature of yielding of steel. So this is something else to come. So we just didn't add it. But for the limit states, we have somewhat uh, more conservative values than the numerical study, which I think is not a, a bad thing. I think it's a good thing uh, to be more conservative. I think with the uh, with the, the emission and the acoustic emission technique, we were able to to hear the events even before we can really observe the old failure. So it means we, we were able to detect this was coming up next. So I'll go fast for the last one. It is the same procedure. Again, you have different uh, values. So it's it just to say that we can confirm that the method is still working for this uh, column again. And we arrive with uh, also uh, uh, limit states uh, for this column. Okay, so it's just another one to confirm that this is still working. Don't want to, to keep you too long. It's getting late and we have another nice presentation coming. So in conclusion, uh, I, I think that in this project, we were able to use uh, the uh, acoustic emission technique to characterize limit states values of confined and unconfined RC columns. And the interesting thing is really that it's a real-time study of the columns during the cyclic test. We have the strain gauge on the steel, but for the concrete, it is something. It is more information, and it could be applied into other projects uh, during the test. So it shows a large potential, but uh, we still have uh, work to do to better define the acoustic signature of all those specimens and maybe refine the grouping. Uh, the clustering technique, it could be uh, refined. So just to, to leave you on this note, uh, in the lab right now, uh, those uh, columns are casted and ready to be tested this fall. So maybe uh, I could come back uh, in a few years, in a couple of years, and uh, tell you more about this. And uh, many thanks uh, to my students and my colleagues, to uh, Patrice Rivan. And uh, just a nice picture of our installation in Canada, in Sherbrooke, if ever you come by. Welcome to visit. Thanks a lot. We have time for several questions. I have uh, maybe one. Uh, uh, thank you for this very nice uh, presentation and very interesting and, and original. Uh, do you imagine that maybe not with these techniques, but with something quite close uh, with acoustic emission, it could be possible to estimate uh, on a real structure the level of damage yeah. after uh, post well, uh, earthquake uh, inspection or such kind of? Uh, actually, uh, my colleague Patrice th really thinks so that we could go and uh, evaluate. Uh, to, to get signature. specific uh, acoustic yeah. 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 signal for each level of damage. Yeah. The thing is, you would have maybe when you do the retrofitting, go and get the, the acoustic signature of uh, the old thing before uh, the event, and then you could come back. We did a few things with the velocities, yeah. so this works too. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, maybe I missed something. But, uh, maybe I, seem, I missed something. But uh, uh, did you speak only of uh, bending failure, or you can also have uh, shear failure in your column? It's a very good question. I should have mentioned it. Uh, for now, everything that was we did was only flexural failure. For now, I. The, the columns the are very is totally different in the two cases. I know, yes. I know, I know. So oh. for it, it, something else that we, we need to look into. I totally agree with you. Another question? So thank you again, Professor Roy. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>